Welcome to Amaya Academy, your path to a new career in visual effects. Starting from the fundamentals, we take you from beginner to professional in six months, giving you the skills and best practices to work in the visual effects industry. We'll also help you with your CV and give you advice on approaching potential employers. Maya for Visual Effects is our course for students who want to become 3D artists or learn to composite stunning imagery with our Nuke for Visual Effects course. Find out further information from our website at amyracademy.com. In this lesson, we'll carry on with our still life scene and we're going to set up our glass shader and our wine shader. So before we do that, let's analyze what is going on in these shaders. So with glass, what we've got is the bending of the light. We can see through the object and it's uh, distorting the background. That's called refraction and that is measured as an index of refraction. Uh, the refraction for glass is 1.4. You can Google search that. And the other thing you can see here is reflections. And the reflections are stronger near the edges. This effect is called the Fresnel effect. So as the faces face away from you, they're more reflective. Uh, most objects uh, have this kind of effect, but this is quite strong in glass. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to dial in those values into our shader. So let's get started. So we'll start by selecting our objects, these two, and then right click, go to assign new material, Arnold AI standard, rename that to glass shader. Let's have a look at the IPR and select a region. And let's start tuning. So I'm going to go to the top of my attributes. And then we're going to first of all turn off diffuse because this is not a diffuse object. It's not like these objects. It's see-through and reflective. So we're going to change the weight of that to zero. So it's completely black. Then we're going to go to reflection and change that up to one. So we're going to turn those on. And now you can see you've got a sharp reflection there. Uh, the difference between specular and reflection is that Reflection is totally sharp and it's got less attributes, whereas specular is designed to be used for more complex uh, reflection uh, and specular be uh, for glossy reflections and things that have got blurred reflections. So we'll use that later on in these objects. But for now we're using reflection for the glass. We've got the weight set to 1 and we're going to also turn on that Fresnel effect. So if we turn that on, you can see now that the edges are brighter then the face is facing towards us, which is what we want. And then we're going to scroll down. If I just turn off, if I just close up this reflection section, go to refraction, and let's turn that on. So at the moment, you can't see through these objects. That's because the weight is set to zero. So let's turn this up. And now you can see through the object. It looks like a plastic object because it's not actually bending the light. So uh, the thicker the object, it seems to bend the light more. So let's set our index of refraction to 1.4, which we saw earlier. And now you can see it's bending the light and it looks a lot thicker. I might just exaggerate that because it does look cooler. So I might just set that to like 1.5-ish uh, because it looks nicer. Um, also, what you can do is turn on Fresnel Use IOR. So in the real world, the index of refraction controls how much reflection there is as well. So the higher this number is, the more reflection there will be in the middle. So if I turn this on, watch what happens to reflections. You can see they're increased, uh, and that's because the IOI is set to 1.5. If I was to turn that down, you can see that there's less uh, in the middle, and there's more on the edges. Okay, So that's the effect that that has. Uh, this one slider controls the reflection and the refraction, uh, like in real life. So I'm just going to leave that on like 1.5-ish, and then we've set our settings. So this doesn't look like our, our reference image, and that's because there's nothing around there to see through, and there's nothing around it to reflect. Uh, we've got our objects, but we haven't got an environment. Uh, the sky dome light that we created in the previous lesson is just a light. It doesn't 
act as an environment. So we need to create one in the render settings. So let's go to the render settings, Arnold renderer, come down to environment and we'll just click on the background section checker. Uh, we've got a few options here. We're going to choose sky shader and that's going to make an object in your scene called transform uh, and there's something uh, in the background here and that's basically what we can use to map an image to. So let's click on color, click on file and we'll pick the same file that we picked before which is background low, click on open so now you can see there's something there so what's happening here is it's just showing up in the background and it's shooting out light as well. You can see there's some lighting going on as well. So I don't actually want that effect. So what I need to do is select that object, go to Windows, Outliner, and come down to this object here called Transform. Let's rename that first of all so we know what that is. Not very descriptive, Transform. So I'm going to say uh, Sky Environment, Environ for short and then click on the sky attributes okay so if I come down here uh, let's have a look at these render stats I don't want it to cast shadows I don't want it to be visible okay I don't want it to shoot out any light uh, as you can see here I already set up my lighting so that's off now and so I, what I do want is I want it to be visible in the reflections and the refractions so now you can see that looks much better and looks a bit more like glass. So now what we need to do is set up our background image. So let's do that in the regular Maya way. We're just going to make an image plane. So I'm just going to minimize this. And I'm going to click on this button here. And pick Sapper Blurred. Open. And that will create an image plane for me. There it is. It's not filling the whole section, so I'm just going to set that to fill the whole area. Uh, fit to resolution gate, if that doesn't work. Uh, let's just say oh, vertical, and that's better. Uh, by the way, you could have created the image plane from view, image plane, import image, and that's the same thing. So the other thing we need to do is push this back. You can see it's intersecting our geometry here, so we don't want that. We want to push it back. So let's do that. I'm just going to go here and go to depth in the placement. Change that to 2000. And these are standard Maya um, image planes, nothing special. Okay, so now that we've got a background, let's have a look at our IPR. Let's open up the render view again. You can see there's a background there. Let's reinitialize this. Okay, so there it is. Uh, but what's happening is it's no different. There's not actually any indication that it's uh, passing through and, and showing it. And that's because by default the image plane is not shown in reflections or refractions. So I've still got it selected, so I can come down to render stats and just turn on these two tick boxes visible and reflections visible and refractions and reinitialize my IPR and now you can see that looks different it's going to look sharper it's going to look like it's got a bit more detail uh, because it's coming from the background there okay so uh, by the way if you can't select your image plane you can also go to view uh, image plane and then image plane attributes and click on there to get to your attributes. Right, so now let's fix these black areas on the bottom and on the top. So first of all this bottom area is because it's intersecting the ground and underneath there it's black. So what we want to do is just lift this up a little bit. It's quite a common issue so I just thought I'd show you. Um, so if I select these two and click on the up arrow and then use our move tool just to move this up a little bit and let's see what that looks like look like they're floating a little bit so let's push them down a little bit Okay, that should do for now okay so that's better 
And then this section here is something else. So at the moment, we've got a ray depth of two. That's the default in the render settings. And what ray depth says is basically how many times it can go through a surface. And our, our glass is made up of four surfaces uh, because it's got a thickness to it. Uh, I'll just show you that quickly. If I select one of these. zoom in here you can see it's got a thickness to it so if the ray is coming out of the camera it has to go through the front the back front and back so it has to go through four things before it can get to the background so that's why it needs a ray depth of at least four in order to get to the background um, we've also got the wine inside here so we actually need about six or seven uh, for the ray depth it's best to keep this to a minimum because it increases render time so let's go back to the shot cam and let's go to IPR. Let's go wrong. I'll try that again. IPR. There we go. Uh, and let's pick this section. Okay. And we'll go to render settings. And it's not sampling, it's ray depth and in the refraction we want to set that to 4 and watch what happens and now you can see through it because we've got 4 um, what we actually want is 7 or 6 or 7 so I'm going to just set this to 7 and that's so that it goes straight through when we apply our wine shader okay so let's get that going now I'm going to copy the glass shader and then change some settings to make it the wine so let's do that now. I'm just going to stop this for a second. Let's go to the window, rendering editors, hypershade. We'll select the glass shader and press Control D to copy, to uh, duplicate, excuse me. You could also use the edit duplicate uh, command in the menu. So I'm going to double click that and rename it to wine there we go and we'll just select the wine objects and assign it so if I marquee over this area here I hold down shift and marquee over this top area that will deselect those objects and we should be left with uh, just the wine objects I'm just showing my wireframe mode there so you can see I've just selected my wine objects I'm going to right click Assign existing material, it's just off the screen here, wine shader. Okay, and then let's have a look at the render view again. So just reinitialize this IPR. There we go, and that's as we'd expect it, it's got glass on the wine, and so we just need to select that shader select some of the wine objects and let's adjust these so the main thing we need to change is the color okay the color doesn't come from the diffuse it comes from the refraction so we've got two settings that we can set we've got color and transmittance the difference is color will just tint it and it's like a multiplier and transmittance is basically when it goes through an object so the deeper it goes the more color it will take on so that gives you quite a realistic effect so I'm going to start off with that and just set that to red you can see uh, it's quite extreme there so I'm just gonna tone that down okay uh, and then I'm gonna set this to red as well and then I'll just swing that down just to make it a bit more subtle get a nice Chianti perhaps okay so you can adjust that to whatever you want um, the other parameter we need to adjust is the IOR uh, because wine has got a different IOR index of refraction to uh, compared to glass so it's about 1.34 I'm not sure who measured this and why they measured it but there you go uh, 1.34 and so now we've got our wine going so let's have a quick recap 
in order to set up these shaders, what we did was we turned off the diffuse, so we changed the weight to zero because it's not a diffuse object. We went to reflection and we turned that on, so we've got some reflections. We then turned on Fresnel so that it's stronger on the edges, which looks more realistic. And then we went down to refraction and turned that on, so we changed the weight to one so that we actually can see through the object. We changed the IOR to something like 1.4 so that it actually bends the light and it looks like a thick object rather than just a piece of plastic. Uh, and then we also turned on Fresnel Use IOR, which is a, a realistic uh, setting which will allow this IOR to control the amount of reflection uh, through this object. Okay, uh, And then for the wine object we also set these colours. Now the important thing to remember with glass is just make sure that you've got something around it to reflect and something behind it to refract and it will look realistic. If you don't have those things there's nothing to actually make up the colour because it doesn't have any colour. So it all depends on the environment. Okay.